So let's talk about mutations. And by mutations, I'm talking about the things we see in our human bodies, such as cystic fibrosis, sickle cell anemia, Down syndrome. Of course, cancer is a big one, right? Now, what is our response with regards to cancer? Well, we all want to destroy it. And in a larger sense, to eradicate its existence from our species. So we observe mutations in humans causing a negative impact toward life. Or rather, mutations produce a negative consequence to our biology, a life-threatening effect. So where's the observation for positive mutations? The mutations that we observe in humans is either a neutral mutation, like differences in hair or eye color. I mean, these things don't serve a purpose or a functional difference in how hair behaves or how the eye functions, right? Um, of course, like I said before, we have mutations that produce negative effects, like cancer. But yet, everything in our body has function and purpose. So to me, it just doesn't make logical sense that we can arrive at the very specific function and purpose of the machine that is our body by a random, unintelligent process that we call mutation. Now, I think something very purposeful happens within our cells. DNA is an instruction code that directs our proteins to do very specific things. They form cells that produce complex functional systems. I mean, a white blood cell performs a very specific function. It defends our body. The rib cage serves a very specific function. <laughs> it protects the lungs and the heart. It's also a framework for our chest. The ability to fly. I mean, think about flying. This requires innate mastery of aerodynamics. You think you can just hop into a plane and fly by accident? No, none of these things are adequately explained with millions of years and random mutation. There's a cause behind these very specific functions. If you want to believe that that's just a random process, you can believe it if you want to, but let's be clear, science isn't saying that. It's humans that make this assertion. We call them scientists. Now, I think their conclusions are wrong. I believe that the fact that we have very specific function and purpose in our biology is evidence that it is done by a design. It is not random. There is a function and purpose to our DNA. And the big observation that we attempt to correlate is our fossil record, right? Well, just because we have fossils, that doesn't demonstrate random mutation is the cause of all of those various life forms. And of the things we can observe that have thousands of generations within our observable time span, they are not producing any new function. Bacteria remains bacteria. A cockroach remains a cockroach. And even the thing we call beneficial mutation, like when we observe bacteria developing antibiotic resistance through mutation. Okay, well, even then, I don't see that as random. The bacteria mutated because it was being attacked. That's a very purposeful response. So then what's up with all of these different categories? Beneficial mutation, harmful mutation. If this is truly a random process, then we should not be able to discern the difference between the two. Now, if we go back to things like cancer, right? And science. Well, the medical field's not treating mutations in humans, that it's something we need to just leave it be and let it run its course, right? I mean, if if we're truly just animated meat, if we're truly just the result of random mutation and natural processes, well, why aren't we leaving well enough alone in this regard? Why are medical scientists meddling with mutations? Why are we treating the mutations we can observe as things that we need to destroy.
And we're even inventing technology to further analyze our DNA, like the CRISPR tool. The fact that we are meddling in our own natural processes, to me, this is a contradiction from natural selection. And I think that we are choosing to meddle because we innately just don't accept that this is a, a random event, that we are a byproduct of a random event. Biology is not random. Replication of cells is not random. If they arrived at random, like why would they all of a sudden stop? Even if you got to function, quote, by accident, well, something made it stop. When it reached the precision that it did, it just ceased being random? That doesn't make any sense to me. Purpose doesn't come from non-purpose. No, I believe it comes from an intelligence. That it comes from God. If you think of everything that we do as humans, in our human world, nobody would say that engineering or technology came by accident. These are very purposeful, specific, calculated things that are repeatable. Nobody would accept that you can write a novel simply by randomizing the alphabet. And no architect would tell you that you can build a building by accident. And if you're a, an expert baker, no baker would tell you that you can just randomly throw ingredients together and get a wedding cake. I mean, these are absurd things that I'm saying right now. Let's take software. There's no software program on earth that would tell you you could get functioning software just by randomizing ones and zeros. And here's a bigger analogy. You can't take the code for Super Mario Brothers and slowly randomize it, and with enough time and chance, you're going to get the operating system that runs the iPhone. I mean, that's just absurd. So when I bring up these kind of concepts, if we all agree that this is ridiculous, if these notions are ridiculous, and these are human-made things we're talking about, this stuff is child's play compared to biology. So why are we supposed to accept that the random scrambling of proteins gives us the most advanced functional purpose in the entire world? Are you kidding me? <laughs>